Hi, everyone. Let's I'll explain a few more minutes. Okay. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, we left off, we were talking about the families. What I wanted to do first here is to show you what we can do with the outside of the actual structure meaning going over here to to mass and, and site and using things like site components and even topo service sur surfaces because basically this is used highly in civil engineering uh drawings you can see the contours there so if i place if i come over here and i click on topo this all will change to tools that would be used for developing an exterior topo map so if i come through here i'm just going to simply go to each corner notice how it started to close it and if i put it there now i've got uh, by doing that i've got a simple plot okay and what i can do is go to each corner now and if i highlight it by clicking on it it'll show me the elevation so if i wanted the elevation of this property to go from say uh zero up front to i'm gonna say negative negative two and apply and then i'll come over here and say negative two and apply it and if i check this i should be able to go to the site Did you record this yes it's recording i should be able to go to the site and then look at it from a 3d perspective and see that it is sloping, see if you can tell. And what I'll do is to get a better idea of that, I will come in here and put a section in. And I'll go to the view. And you will see that the grade is sloping from the front to the back. So that's a simple elevation drawing or contour drawing that 
if I wanted to, I could really make this site complicated and give it highs and lows and swells and things like that. Notice how it automatically also puts in the hatching to show that this is, that's the standard hatching to grade in civil engineering. Three, three hatches one way, three hatches another, three hatches up and down. So it automatically will put it in for you. So realistically, when you're developing a drawing like this, let's go back to here, you would most likely, it's not gonna show up, see it's not showing up here, it would show up on our site plan. You would definitely try to draw the site in first and then alter or cut away grade that you would not need any longer so you could put your structure in. So again, if I came back here and I hit topo again, and I'm just going to put in a couple of different lines, All right? And then the next thing I'll do is I'll pick up my cursor and I'll come over here. Now we know that this is at zero at this point. So I'm going, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn these into two. See now notice how the, the design is starting to change on the screen because I'm giving it physical Z distance. Okay, so again, for those that are wanting to go into civil engineering, this is ultimately one of the tools that you'll be using. Now, again, I'll come back over here. Make sure you hit the check mark to get out. And I'll go and I'm going to put a section in over here. This way I can demonstrate relatively easy. So you'll see, it's really not a good view, but I do have a two foot mound over here. Now, most likely what you would normally do in this case, and I'm going back to site. In this case, you would probably say, all right, I'm gonna come here and what did I do here, hold on. So now we're starting to develop contours. So these are all at two. I can then make the rest of these. Let's see if I can just pick them up like that. I can and just say uh, one. And that will change them. And if I go to my 3D view, I'll start to see a change in the way the site is actually looking. Let's see, it'll show up. See, it starts to show up differently. So again, this type of application is really good for when you are working with sections to actually show the detail of the actual site. All right, so that, again, let me go back to close these. I'll go back to the site. So that's when you're working with grade and you want to change different uh, components of the actual grade. Now here, if you get to here, it has trees. You can start putting trees in. There's all kinds of different trees, have you noticed? So you can a landscape architect relatively quick and again if you go back to your 3d it's going to show the trees when it's in a um, realistic visual style it will show them 
like that. And if you can't get out of there and just put consistent colors, it'll show it just like cardboard cutouts. Not to take up too much uh, graphics or anything like that. So again, we'll go back to level one. See now the trees are showing up and some of this is showing up on uh, level one, which you can change that. You can come over here and you can say, yeah, let's see, great, let's see, topo. ST, I can take that off of there and I hit apply, hit OK, and that's gone. Now, if I don't want the trees, I come back over here. And I believe it's under entourage, I think that's what they call it. Hit OK. Oh, it's not. Maybe it's under trees. Or plantings. Yeah, we got plantings. So you have to start to remember what they should, what they name these things. If you want to be efficient, I'll take out the views. Okay. It's going to come up with that dialog box to tell you that you're deleting views here out of your browser. All right. How did anybody do getting to the point where they finished the plan and putting doors and windows? Everybody get to that point or no? Yes. Uh, I can't find. I don't have like a little drop down menu for like furniture and stuff. I have doors and windows and stuff. But I don't have anything for like toilet and bathroom and sink and stuff. Uh, up here at the top, when you went to load family, right? You didn't see anything under plumbing. Uh, I can check right now. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not done either. Yeah, I have like doors and stuff. And I put all the doors and windows in, but I don't have any furniture. But again, Let me... Check to see if you have the plumbing. Oh, right. Um, there was something that we, that uh, happened last class. Um, Everybody didn't have all the uh, um, families. That's what, what happened, right? It um, Last class, we went, we went over that not everybody has all the right. families. All right. What I'm going to so, do is I'm going to put the families up at, on... I'll put it up to my uh, my Google Drive, and you guys can download it. Yeah, the only family I have is the structural stuff. All right, so if I put it up to my Google Drive, you guys will be able to download it. Uh, and if you can't download it because of permissions, just send a note to me, send an email, and I'll I'll, I'll give your email uh, permission to open it up. Because sometimes when I make things okay. available to everyone on Google, it, st it still doesn't happen. I don't know why. Uh, okay, so we'll, let me see if I can do that real quick now while we're waiting. Let's see. <laughs> All right, that's going to take, it'll take a while. So let's keep going. So that's, that's loading. All right. So what I wanted to also go over tonight is the roof. Putting on the roof. Um, again, it's just another, it's just a family at this point. If I look at my 3D, I don't have a roof at this point. 
what I'm going to do is delete the trees so they don't get in the way. How do you color a uh, layer? How do you get the color back? Down yes. here at I mean, the like bottom, I had... see at the bottom, there's a box, a three-dimensional box. You click on that and you could pick shaded, consistent, or realistic. Realistic will get you as close to a rendering as possible. Consistent will at least give you colors that will break up shapes and spaces. It won't be consistent with the actual colors, but you'll be able to visually look at it. And shaded is a little bit different. It shades different walls based on where the uh, sunlight is. All right, so down here is where you can change the colors. You can also, I believe, go to the display options and change these things here as well. Like if you wanted sketchy lines, I you know, enable sketchy lines and it, it looks like a sketch. All right. Um, Where were the graphic display options? It was up right here, up at the top. Got it. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to try to put a roof on this. And then we're going to also give it some of the finishes for the fascia and the soffit. Um, let's go back to level one. And at this point, I'm just going to move my graphic out of the way. Because I could always put it back. I don't need it there. All right. Uh, I'll remove this, these dimensions. Okay. So now if I want to do a roof, go to architecture, and you go to roof. And you have, it's going to ask me, do I want it to go up to the second level? And obviously, yes. And it'll turn green. Now you have the option of changing, tracing it, or doing it with a rectangle if it was a simple roof. I mean, at this point, I don't believe this is a simple roof. We're going to try to make it as simple as possible. Um, we're going to ask for an overhang. Let's see what my cursor can. We're going to put in a um, 12 inch, maybe a 14 inch. We'll do a little odd. 14 inch overhang. All right, and I'm going to come over here with the line. I'm going to grab the corner. And again, see, it didn't take it. I'll see if I can put in 14. All right, now I'll take it off. All right, so now I'll go to each corner. Tracing the exterior. Okay, and I'll come right to here and should pick everything up. I should have closed that. I don't know why that didn't close. And I'll hit what happened here with should say highlighted lines that currently didn't intersect. Okay, so if you get a uh, dialog box that looks like that. You have to take a look around your drawing because you notice how we have tight turns here. So sometimes they, it may not get it. So I'm just going to say, okay, continue. That means I want to go back to my drawing and I'm going to click on the line and drag it until it intersects. 
I'm going to drag it again. And I'll now, since I got a dialog like that, I'll just go around and check each corner to make sure that, see, now again, it did it over here. This will not usually happen on a roof that is stretched out. These, they have, you have a lot of valley changes here. So, I mean, the roof changes and intersections. So, that's why it happened. In a normal situation, it probably wouldn't have happened. I'll go around. Okay. So C Revit will not allow you to close out the command unless it's done properly or unless it can do it properly. Now I'm hit that. All right. Yes. All right. So now we'll go to 3D and we look at it. And you know, it's not a bad looking roof considering. In a regular shape. All right, so there's certain things that you can make changes to. Uh, for example, now if I come over here and I click on this, I should get that out of the sketching mode. Hold on. If I click on this right now, you'll see that it highlighted. And if I double click on it, it's going to go back to the mode that we actually did the tracing in, but it's still in 3D. Um, what it's doing here is it's allowing me now to look at the pitches of the roof. If you see those little symbols, uh, just like in math, in your trig or whatever you using this for, you'll have a symbol like that for pitch. Now, if I click on that, and I come up here, it's saying it's got a slope. I don't want a slope on that. I'm going to just take that off for now. I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to hit OK. And notice it, it turned it into an A-frame instead of, let's see, a hip to roof. Now, a lot of you probably don't know the difference. A uh, hip roof has One, two, three, four, five. It has, let's see, let me do a hip proof over here so you guys can understand what we're talking about. I'm going to put in a, a structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I put a roof on this, I don't think it's going to do it because I didn't do it right. Uh, yes, I'll say yes. All right. So this is a hip roof because it's got one, two, three, four sides. All right. So that's a weird looking location and I didn't even take the time to draw it right. That is a hip roof. This would be considered an A-frame roof because it's, it's actually creating an A. So it's basically depending on what your design is, what your, the choice of the look. Like now if I click on this, I'll take the slope off, I'll pick then it turns it to an A-frame roof. All right, these, the difference is, these roofs here are easier to build, a lot less consuming, time consuming and labor, whereas these roofs, the hip roofs, are much more harder to build, all right? All right so we'll go back in plan view, Let's see if I can show it. In plan view, there's not, you can see that there's a difference here and here. And then a hip roof, you're gonna see all the surfaces. In an A-frame roof, you'll see the surface, but you won't see the gable portion of the actual roof. So let's let's look at that one more time. Over 
here. And if I draw, simple, and I put a roof in, and I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to go around. Now, this is where I can use the rectangle command. I can just come through and put it in. Now, this roof here, click, yes. I'll go to 3D. Where do I put that? There it is. That is a simple hit roof. Now, if I come back, and let's see where I can see this. I can see the roof on level two because that's where it is. If I double click that, see again, it goes purple on me. Now, if I wanted it to make a flat roof out of this, I could let's see if I can highlight the whole thing. Uh, and I could take everything off. And I'm going to go to my 3D view. And I just made a flat roof because I took the slopes off of each of the. So now if I double click again, I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to give it slope. So that means one side will pitch and the other side won't. So I'm going to click again and go to 3D and there, see, now I got a shed type roof. So that's what, that's what clicking and changing the roof symbol. If you notice, I click that, I can take this on and off. And I also can change the pitch of the roof. Nine over 12, if I want, I can change this to five. All right. And go back to here. Notice how it got a little bit more gradual. So that's how you take on a roof in Revit. Um, so again, looking at the roof itself, let's see, let's look at it from an elevation. I'll go to the south elevation. And that's what it would look like in elevation. All right, and if I turn this back to consistent, it would give it some colors. And now what I'll do is I'm going to go through and change the roof finish. And I'm also going to put in fascia, which is this portion here that goes around the outside of the roof. All right, because we don't want shingles on that. Um, so at that point, I'll just close this, close that 30 here. I left the roof there. Okay, and let's see if I can remember where faces were. Um, I think this still was under roofing. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm going to bring for this whole long people. roofs are here all right and there's fascia so now if I come over here I can now start to drag this out and if you notice it'll highlight should I put it in the wrong spot 
you can come in and put it on there. Let's see. Okay, hold on. That's the actual face you're there. What did I do with? I'm going to delete that. Let me put the roof uh, roofing on first. Okay, so I'll just drag that. And That's not it. Hold on. Okay. Let me click that. Go to edit. Get the nice fault. Okay. Hit OK. Hit OK. And apply. And it should change it. OK, it changes it. Now, notice how it drops down. We don't want that to happen. So we should be able to. And I don't know why it's not. Why it's not allowing you to do it? There. Okay. So if you see, I have my, I have my shift key pressed down. So that's how you would put on a different material on the roof. So Sorry. Uh, go ahead. How did you do? Uh, how did you put like the brick design on the roof? A. A lot. I went to insert, or no, not insert, I'm sorry, I'm getting, walking away from myself. I clicked on the roof. I went over here to edit type. Then I went here to structure. And then I changed this. I typed in asphalt. And that came up. And I selected it and I hit apply and it turned it into our roof. Okay. Everybody got that? And the same way I'm doing with the fascia, I'm selecting, I have the shift key down, I drag it out and I, I'm selecting the actual, um, I believe the top line of the fascia, see? How I did that, and I'll go over here and do the same thing here. Make sure your shift key is down. Pick this, drag it out, and put it right on top of the line there, and it will put it in for you. Now, in this case, the fascia is a little bit wider, so I can go through here and change that. I'm not sure if that's... Let's see what the size I have here. So one by 12. So if I want, I can make this 14. Let's see if that no, it won't let me do that. Well, let me change it there. Uh, so if I double click this, let's see. I can't change it here either. Hmm. Not sure where we can change it. Let's see. Category. We know what the category is. Ah, okay. Can I change it to a different size here? Yeah. Hmm. 
I'll have to look into that because I don't know how to change that from that point. All right. So again, putting on the roof and the fascia for our purposes here, it's not matching up, uh, but that's good enough for here. Let me find out how to make the change. I'll let you know while we're here now. Let me just check to see. Yeah. Okay, Revit is done. I'm going to share. Anyone with the link, copy, done. All right, I'm going to send it out under announcements. Okay. Okay, now let me know if you can access it and download it while we're here. I'll keep going through this. All right, so I'm going to go back to plan. Now we talked about putting the roof on. We talked about putting the fascia on. Did we discuss how to change the wall finishes? I don't recall. Yes, we did. But I'll do that again. Okay, so if you click on the wall itself, you can do this for all the walls or you can do it for individual walls. In this case, um, let's see, we'll do it for all of them. And I'll just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a window through. See that? How I did that? I dragged it through. Let's see if it'll allow me to do that. Walls there. Okay. Edit type. And structure. And we'll go over here. To the material browser, I'm going to put in siding. See if anything comes up. Nothing comes up. Okay, let's see. Let's try wood. Mm -hmm. Nothing that would really help. Let's try going here. Plastic could be siding. Now let me get out of that there. Let me just change this. I'll go to plastic, see if anything comes up. No. Um, see, this is how, how it confusing it can get if you don't know where everything is. And again, people, these these numbers and things like this within Revit are based on the Construction Specification Institute. They developed years ago the numbering system for all construction materials, and that's what's being followed here. So in this case, let's do a search. I don't think huh. exterior. Wow, going Z 
zero tonight. Um, all right, let's let's make it all brick. At this point, I got to find out where the uh, siding is being kept. So I'm going to make it all brick. Hit it. Hit apply. Hit OK. And now everything in the structure is brick. So if I go back to 3D, I have a 3D structure, okay? So again, realize people that everything is related to each other. Now, most likely inside here, let's do a, a, um, a view of the interior. I might have put it in, say, a project, of course. Uh, let's see if I made the brick inside, too. Yes, I did. So I made a mistake there. So what would I have to do? Anybody know? What would I have to do? Right now, I have a finish on both sides that are the same. So. I would have to go back to this. So I'll go back to my. I'm going to select these again. And I'm going to make sure I got all the walls. Since I selected everything on the interior, I'm going to go back to this and change this to. Let's see. You know what? I'll just go undo that. The heck with that. I'm going to undo. Okay. So I'll go back to my 3D and I'm going to use this one particular wall as an example. So I will click on this wall. Why is it not allowing me to click? And I'll click on this wall then. Something, please. All right. Now I will go back to here. I'm going to see if there is a exterior brick. If I do it on brick, it's going to on concrete masonry. In it, it's definitely going to change the thickness of it. So if I leave it the way it is, I'm going to come here and edit. And then I'm going to go back to edit again. Now, here, top and bottom are. All right, now I'll pick this. Hit OK. All right, and I'm going to hit OK and apply. It did the whole thing again because at this point I didn't change the the name of the actual wall. So we're gonna go back to this and all right now let's see if I do it this way. All right, so now it just changed that wall. Now I'm going to go back to my plan. And I believe it was this wall. I'm going to put a camera in there. Now notice it's still drywall on the inside. So I picked a wall that was drywall on the inside and concrete. Uh, I mean, brick on the outside. So you have to be careful. Oh, wait, did I do that wall or this wall? Oh, wait, let me check. Yeah, okay. So it's the same thing. I'm having a bad night, people. Sorry. All right, so the thing I want to go over 
tonight is that when you create a wall, when you're creating a wall, you are actually creating that particular wall. So if I zoom into this and click on that, there are things on the screen that you'll see. Center line, wall center line. You could grab the wall by the center line or by the face of the exterior or the interior. And they have a core which you can't see on here, but that's where the material is going to change. So if I come over here and I go to structure, you can add, notice how the 20 foot auto automatically went back. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna turn this into um, copper. Let's see if that will allow me to do that. Okay, let's see what happens. If I go to view it, see how it turned it to copper. All right, so we're going to get in, into it deeper later on, but the the way these walls are structured, there's an inside layer. So. There's an inside layer and an outside layer and a core layer. So you are actually developing a assembly that can be translated to a contractor in the field. I'm going to change this back so I don't get confused. All right. All right. So we did the roof. I showed you how to insert. You can insert different families from the entourage. So there's different things in here where you can put in people to show scale. So if I go to entourage, let me close this. And there's the person. I can put Cynthia over here at the front step. I can put Florence around the side. All right. So now when I go back to 3D, they're going to. Oh, where are they? They should be there. Okay, Florence is sitting in the air and she's walking. So there's a lot of different things you can put in going to insert. They've got trucks, detail items. Again, notice these division numbers. That's based on the Construction Specification Institute's uh, breakdown of finishes and materials and performance uh, specifications. So let's see. Entourage, then you have plantings. You can go into plantings and pull out different trees. Those are already inserted in my families, and you saw that before. Um, so now, I have a fairly finished outside. It's not complete, but I'm going to go to the site and I'm going to come over here to view and I'm going to say walkthrough. All right, so walkthrough doesn't necessarily mean you have to walk through the house, but I am going to pick a path. Okay, 
right? There's a path for my walkthrough. All right, let's see. And I'm going to go to view. All right, there's the view of that they left off at. And where's my, I can't see there. Uh, let me change the finish type. So it looks like that. And I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. And I, and I will play it. So I can actually put together a graphic that will show whether, you know, a client, different things, or th different things about the design. And obviously, you can change the speed and the number of frames. You can download this to a uh, an MPEG or a Windows video file. So there's a lot of different things that you can use graphically that from here that you're in, in AutoCAD would be virtually impossible or too time consuming to finish. All right, let me get back to this. I'll close this out. And you can save it. I did not save it, so it's not there any longer. All right. Any questions? So for Wednesday, what you're going to submit is the floor plan itself, okay, with the room tags, meaning the room names, right? Did everybody get a chance to look at it to see if they could download the, um, the family file that I shared? Uh, the download is going through. It's just taking a while. Okay, so you got you had you got access. Yeah. Okay, good. Um. So for Wednesday, you're going to be required to submit the plan with the tags. All right. And the windows and the doors, obviously. If you're having problems with the kitchen and the assembly of that, we can do that together on Wednesday. All right. Uh, if you submit it without it complete, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Because uh, that is kind of complicated. So, but the one thing I want you to do though is try annotating the actual drawing, meaning showing dimensions for example all right like i'm doing here just try to give me an idea that you know how to use the uh, dimension command um, and for the submission the number of drawings you're going to submit two Can I not follow a sheet? Okay, we're going to load a title block from, let's put it, you can submit it on A and hit OK. And then OK, and it'll jump down here. Now, if you want another one, you have to do the same thing. You go to sheet, but it's right there, and you just hit OK. So you're going to have A101 and A100. One will be the floor plan. And the other, and the other will be an exterior.
perspective, something that's showing the outside. So in this case, I'll do those for you, but mine's obviously not complete. So the first one is the floor plan. I click on that. I'll go up here to level one, drag it in and drop it. And it should drop it somewhere in the middle, but depending on what you have on your drawing, and you should be able to get the entire thing at an eighth inch scale. I don't think you'll have a problem. All right. And the next thing is you'll go to your, your exterior perspective. Now this is where I should have done that first before I did this. You'll do it from your site plan. All right, now here's my site plan. You're gonna to go to view, go to 3D, take your camera and place it out here somewhere. Either here, here, or wherever you want to take the shot from. And I will show a view like that. Click. And there's the view. All right, and then make sure you turn it to a realistic. Okay. So now I have that. Now I'll just drop down here. It's showing up under view five, okay? So I don't know what yours will show up under. So I'll come back, go to my sheet, make sure I'm on my sheet, and go to view five and drag that in and drop it right there, and I'll have that, okay? So at that point, you're ready to print. You're going to print a101 and A102. So you come over to file, you go to your print button, select print. Okay, okay, now you're gonna get this. Now here can everyone do this right now and let me see if you have PDF capabilities, you should, but just to check, because I'm mine is showing up because I have a, a creator on my computer. I want to make sure that you guys have it on yours. So if you go to print and change the name of the printer, do you have a PDF creator somewhere. Yeah, I have it. You do have it? Yeah. Okay. Everyone else? I have it too. Okay. Does it look like it's resident with the uh, Revit software? Because it's not on mine, I could see that. Mm. I don't know. If If you don't have it, I'm going to go through another way we can do it. But um, if you do have it, just just follow along. So you would select your printer here as your PDF writer, and then you would go down here to the bottom and select Views and Sheets. All right, and then select the bottom button. You don't want to print all of this stuff here because that's all the stuff that we've been working on. The only two you want to print is this one 
and that one, sheet 101 and 102. All this other stuff is just stuff that's in the background and you don't need to print that. So you can just select those two and hit OK. It's going to ask you if you want to save it. It's up to you. You don't need to. I'll just say no. And I'm going to make sure I select type the PDF. And I'm going to hit OK. Uh, do I want the two sheets as a separate file? I'm going to say no. Do you wish you have chosen to print the two sheets as separate files? Where do I do that? Well, hold on a second. Oh, there it is. Sorry. And now I'll say OK. And I'm going to close. And I'm going to say just rev it for now. Put it on my desktop. Print. This is fairly awkward. It's not as easy. Um, let's see if it goes to my desktop. There it is. So you definitely, it does print out for you. There you have it. For those of you that do not have this, I'm assuming I, I'm assuming that it is with the Revit software, but I have a 19 version, so you have the later version, so it might be in your software. Um, for those of you that don't have it, just, uh, let's see, take a snip of it. Use your snip tool. You should. And just select it. I don't believe they can save this as a PDF. Let's see. Of course not. Okay, you can save it as a, a JPEG, and I'll make sure that I change the submission thing to PDF or JPEG. All right, so you'll be submitting two files instead of one. For those of you that don't have the PDF writer, again, so your SNP tool, you just use it. Does everybody familiar with SNP? You just type in SNP at the search bar and it will come up and you can just take a little snip of it like that probably easier just to do it that way okay so for wednesday you'll submit the floor plan and the perspective of the exterior make sure that you do change um your your finishes on your exterior and your roof. Now let me just follow work together. Uh, side. Exterior. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm gonna get anything on that. Let me try one more place. Let's see if it shows up in here. And it's really strange. Okay. 
I did some research online. But this used, if, if you do find, I mean, you can make it concrete if you want. You can make the exterior of your house concrete block or um, um, brick, clay brick. It's up to you. All right. Any questions? No? We're all okay then. I have a question. Sorry. 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 How many how many parts of the house do you need to show the the dimensions of? Just show me, you know, the, when you're going through, just show me that you can, you, you know how to use the dimensions. I mean, you could just dimension the top here, this portion right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Sorry, I cut you off. Is everybody okay with this for month, uh, for Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Well, then we're done tonight. I'm going to go watch the rest of the rallies. Make sure you go out and vote, no matter which side. Vote, vote, vote. Sounds good. Don't waste your right. Are oh, you going to post the recording? Yes, I will do that. Okay. Professor, thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night, Mike. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Have a good night.